Who are the best and worst owners in the Premier League is the topic up for debate on today's video. We did the championship yesterday. I'm going to link that at the end. If you missed that and you want some more of this type of discussion, if you want to have your say, head over to the community tab. Bit of a surprising result too. How do you feel about the job being done by the owners at your club? That is the poll up at the moment. 84% say that they are happy with the job being done by the owners. Maybe it's the 16% moaning that make most of the noise, but that doesn't ring true with a lot of the discourse I hear. But hey, we talk about the loud minority a lot on social media, and maybe most people are happy with their owners. We're going to go thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs in the middle. Do have in the back of your mind, though, we're talking about the Premier League, and outside of maybe a certain six teams towards the top, most people are doing well to be there. So there are a lot of thumbs up in here in comparison to when we did do the championship where maybe you've got some failing clubs that need to do a little bit better by virtue of the fact we're doing the top division. There are a majority thumbs up, I've got to say, in advance. And at the end of the video, I'm going to do a Hall of Fame. I'm going to stick three names in there and a Hall of Shame as well. Get in the comments. You don't need to just comment on the team you support. Give us your Hall of Fame Three Premier League ownerships who you think are doing really well. A Hall of Shame, three who are doing really badly. Uh, let's go in alphabetical order. So we're going to start with Arsenal. And I'm going to give it the thumbs in the middle for Arsenal because even though stadium's full, stadium's noisy, manager's good, team's good, great challenge on the pitch to a freak show that is Man City. We'll get onto their ownership um, in due course. Get the popcorn ready for that one. I just feel Mr. Cronky has to deliver the Premier League title for this to be a success, given where everything started and where they've grown the club to with Arsene Wenger in the Premier League era. They were right there at the start of the gold rush. I think for the thumbs up, he needs to deliver the Premier League title. And you can debate that in the comments. So I'll go thumbs in the middle for Arsenal. Got to give a thumbs up to Aston Villa, just purely I don't think you can argue with the trajectory, can you? In the Championship when NSWE took over, and they're now in the Champions League. By God, if they stay there and break that glass ceiling. We did um, an individual video on Aston Villa, which you can check out on that very subject. They are going to be amongst the best owners in the league. Not just a thumbs up that I'm giving NSWE at Villa. Bournemouth as well. I know they've not been there long, but I'm not going to plead the fifth because it's a season and a half. And Bournemouth... Always questions asked about Bournemouth. How long are they going to hang around? When are they going to drop off given size and expectation in the Premier League? They went up from 15th to 12th. So I've got to give Bill Foley the thumbs up for now. I wonder whether they'll deliver those stadium improvements that um, maybe will have people considering Bournemouth with, um, I don't know, a less patronising tone that they get a lot of in the sort of Premier League hierarchy as things stand. But thumbs up from me for Bill Foley and Bournemouth. And thumbs up for Brentford. Yeah, I don't really know what, how you could argue against Brentford's owners being absolutely fantastic. Matthew Benham. Yes, he did have money, but it was spent so beautifully right throughout the rise up the EFL. And here they are in a new stadium in the Premier League. Nice and stable. Feels like it might be a bit of a test this year in terms of moving from sort of Premier League Team 1 and transitioning into Premier League Team 2. But... How can you argue with the trajectory for Brentford and for Brighton? Those two are the poster boys, which makes it difficult for me to talk about because they're both together in alphabetical order and both begin with bruh, which means I get very confused when I'm saying a lot of the same things. Um, what I will say that Brighton have done that Brentford haven't yet done is what Brentford did in the championship in terms of selling um, really high after buying really low. The dream scenario for anyone's recruitment strategy Brighton have actually done that in the Premier League as well and made just boatloads of cash, even transferring their managers away. So, yeah, just an amazing job by Tony Bloom there. Picked them up in League One as well, and it's just a completely different club now uh, down at Brighton. Chelsea, ladies and gentlemen, we have a thumbs down for Todd Bowley at Chelsea. Maybe in a few years' time, this will all be thumbs up and rosy and... All these long contracts and young players and managerial changes have all paid dividends. And Chelsea are back where they've been for the majority of the last 20 years up in the top four, challenging for the title. But to begin with, 
you can't argue. It's just been really, really chaotic, really up and down with uh, managers, with signings, with potential uh, financial stuff and how much on a knife edge that is, we'll find out, won't we? Um, but yeah, just a bit chaotic and a bit under-delivering so far for Chelsea and hopefully for the Chelsea fans. They're playing the long game and that thumbs down spins around as everything plays out nicely. But at the moment, got to give it the thumbs down, haven't I? Uh, Palace? These ones are open for debate where you get a team like Palace who are always kind of in the middle of the Premier League and given size and expectation and finance and budgets and all that, it's kind of got to be seen as a success. I know there's always the argument of, uh, we had the same discussion with Preston and Bristol City and whatnot. It's a bit different in the championship, I guess, where you're a bit hamstrung by the um, parachute payments and the um, FFP, but maybe the same in the Premier League where you're, um, the parachute payments are just the Champions League money those top teams get and um, uh, Palace and John Texter uh, doing well just to be where they are and <laughs> it feels like a knife edge because you do feel like these teams in the middle of one bad window, one bad hire away from one bad season and down they go into the championship but until that happens, it's a thumbs up for Palace and it's a thumbs down for Everton, our second thumbs down here for Mr... Mashiri and I guess the expectations for Mashiri, it's 2016 when he came in, were that he was going to move them from sort of just outside the top six, top four. Like in there a few times in the in the last sort of 20 years, but up into the Champions League positions where everyone wants to be. It's been hapless, hasn't it? Some really bad spending. I know they're moving across to the new stadium, but FFP deductions and just absolute chaos, hasn't it? I'm pretty sure he wants to sell. Um, but you've got to give it the thumbs down right now for where we are with Everton. <clears throat> Excuse me one second. As I take a drink and clear my throat. And we move on to Fulham. I'm going to go thumbs in the middle for Fulham. I know what I said about Palace, about you know clubs and expectations and size and where Fulham have been the last couple of seasons. But you've got to say over the period of Mr Khan's ownership, three relegations and three promotions. The yo-yoing, that's different than what someone like Palace has done, hasn't it? So I think I just need to see a bit more stability for the thumbs up, given the start position where we've been and where we are now. But um, brilliant last promotion and the last couple of seasons under Marco Silva. Uh, Stabilising nicely. Just look out for those ticket prices, Mr Khan, as well. Don't, don't go too crazy with that or else the thumbs down is definitely coming, isn't it? Ipswich, look, uh, whatever I say about Ipswich, um, I'll get accused of bias and lack of objectivity. So I'll say very little other than game changer. Yes, you know, way more money than everyone else in League One. Not in the championship, though. And to go from 11th in the champion uh, in League One straight through the championship into the Premier League. I mean, we'll see what happens this season at the top level. But bit different than, say, Brighton and Brentford, who did it very, very um, kind of slowly and steady wins the race. But you can't argue with that astronomical rise for Ipswich. So big thumbs up for Game Changer there. Uh, Leicester, I find this so difficult to judge because you have, on the one hand, in recent times, it's been pretty disastrous, hasn't it? They've gone from two top five finishes and some really bad business where really good players, loads of money was invested in and they were allowed to leave for free. And then down the league they went. And did they hang on to Brendan Rodgers too long? Relegation, um, a potential FFP breach while well, the charge has been made. And if guilty, there'll be a points deduction this season. That's all pretty disastrous. Yes, they got back last season, first time of asking. And then in the background, every time I go to Leicester, Champions of England, you allowed us to sing that or whatever the whatever words they put in the chant. You've got the elephant in the room that these owners delivered a Premier League title to a club that um, kind of in the hierarchy has no right to be winning the Premier League title and the best story in English football in, in decades. So how can I give that a thumbs down despite a bit of a disastrous last few years? Have I navigated that one? Let me know in the uh, comments. Uh, Liverpool, I'm going to give a big thumbs up. Yes. It's gigantic worldwide fan base, massive club, massive history. But in this era, and we're getting very close to talking about them, you're going against Man City. And for anyone to have beaten Man City, I know they only did it once, 
But there were other seasons where they got, a, what do you get, like 99 points or something, 98 or something, and not win the not win the Premier League title. I think they've punched as good as they've got um, with Fenway and Klopp. Big test now, though, um, transitioning over to slot. But I'm going to give Liverpool a big thumbs up just on the basis that in the era Fenway found themselves owning the club, what more could they have done? Right, here we go. So I've given Man City a thumbs down. And I do totally accept the argument. If you write in the comments, Ben, they've won the title six years out of seven or whatever it is and um, redeveloped everything in that area and delivered beautiful football. You can't give them the thumbs down. I accept that argument. And we're in, we're in the realms of opinion and subjectivity here. I just feel now the stench is just too great, isn't it? And this whole idea that this era and Pep Guardiola the GOAT of football managers and the Aguero moment and Yaya Toure and David Silva and Kevin De Bruyne and now Erling Haaland. We should be remembering this as something utterly, utterly glorious. And until November and the 115, and until such time as we have it proven, you know, without the might of filibustering in the most expensive legal team ever assembled, Avengers Assemble legal teams, as, until that's cleared, the stench is too much and I've got to give it a thumbs down. And part of me also thinks, um, even though the Premier League were complicit in this, the level of dominance that the money that the Man City owners have been allowed to plough in, whilst it's been amazing for Manchester City, has it actually been good in general for the English game? A lot of people now would say, no, I know we get dominant teams in the eras. We had Liverpool, didn't we? in the 80s and Man United in the 90s and noughties and maybe Chelsea to a certain extent, although that was financially baked in, wasn't it? But I'm going to give Man City the thumbs down and I will come back on here if they're cleared of all the 115 charges and it's basically the Premier League's fault. They let them run a mock and Man City didn't actually do anything wrong. Until such time, I'm not changing that over there, excuse me, to a green thumbs up. And Debate it. Go on. I'll, I'll accept both sides of the argument, but that's where I'm falling right now until this court case in November. Uh, Man United, can't judge it, can we? I think it was February Ineos um, got their kind of uh, controlling stake. It's not been long enough. I suppose they've won the FA Cup and they've brought in a uh, footballing sporting director or whatever Dan Ashworth is, is doing there. Eric Ten Hag's got a new contract. We'll see. The proof will be in the pudding, but it's too early to judge. Ineos and Man United. <laughs> and here goes another can of worms. I'm going to go right down the middle on Newcastle here because I know a lot of people, and I never want this channel to be moral, socio-political talk. There's too many other platforms on the internet doing that, and it's too divisive for me to cope with all the you know screaming and arguing that goes in the comments. It is your right if you have an issue with the Newcastle ownership and... Um, the kind of links to the country and that regime. It's your right to not like that. That's that's fine. I I try not to get involved in that, but I get why people don't like it. Um, on pitch, operationally, they've been pretty good, haven't they? Um, but I get the stench that people don't like. And um, they've certainly been more heavily regulated than uh, Abu Dhabi. Let's be honest, let's call it as it is. So we're talking about Saudi and we're talking about Abu Dhabi and nation states and regimes being in charge. So... I'll go down the middle on the basis that there is that elephant in the room um, and how you want to judge that is entirely up, up to you and I respect everyone's opinion on that. On pitch, it's been good fourth and seventh and um, yeah, um, they've kind of done it as quietly as you can when you've got more money than God. Uh, here's one I'm really interested in debating. Uh, Forrest and Mr. Marinakis because, um, I mean, I'm giving it the thumbs up but there's plenty of nuance to this, isn't it? He's a bit crazy, isn't he, Mr. Marianakis? He's, um, but I kind of asked the question. I said this about Mr. Ilicharli, the hull owner, yesterday. If you're going to go out for a drink um, with one of your mates, do you want him to be like Mr. Marianakis? And you know the shots are coming out. You know he's going to stick the card behind the bar and go for it and everything's going to be great. Or do you want to be go out, you're really sensible, mate, and you're going to be home by 10 and all. I'm feeling a bit tipsy now, so let's book the taxi and let's have a glass of water and, and drink no more. So 
it depends how you like your bread butter, doesn't it? And Mr. Marinakis's box office in the championship, we had him sign a whole new squad, get rid of a whole new squad, change the manager pretty much every season. But where were they and where are they? And Forrest will languish in, been out of the top flight forever. And Steve Cooper came in and up they went and they're stabilising. You can argue the points deduction is bad ownership or you can argue the points deduction was a uh, cause and correlation of a ridiculous system. And teams like Forrest, who have a great promotion with some low knees out of nowhere from the bottom of the league with Steve Cooper in one season, you can argue the system goes against teams that do that. Is that me setting up the argument for it this season? <laughs> but um, look, you tell me on, on Forrest, um, but if I'm using the binary, where were they? Where are they? And that he's box office. I'm going to give Mr. Marianakis the thumbs up and I hope they can sort out the issues with the various local authorities and um, local and central government arguing about the what they're going to do with the stadium because that could really take it over the top. A um, stabilised forest in the Premier League with a massive um, increased capacity and that stadium full could be could be special time under Mr. Marianakis. I'll give him the thumbs up and you can debate it in the comments. Southampton, uh, too short. One relegation, although I don't think they can um, really take the blame for that, can they? Um, promotion, bounce straight back. Proofs in the pudding now for Dragan. What's his surname? Too many, too many owners on my brain these last two days and too much, um, uh, too little sleep for me to remember um, everybody's name. But um, I'll plead the fifth and if they survive the Premier League and start building, then the thumb has got to go up for Southampton. Spur, I mean, debate this one. Have Joe Lewis and Enoch, although they've distanced themselves from Joe Lewis in recent years, but have Enoch been good owners for Spurs? Because you can argue this totally either way, can't you? On a commercial and consistency level, they've been amazing owners. They're profitable pretty much every year. They've got an amazing stadium. Um, I wrote this down top five, um, I think 13 times or something since 2001 when Enoch took it over. So incredibly consistent, very good commercially. Mr. Levy always, um, like we said about maybe a Brighton, sells at a profit and brings in good players. Maybe he's the next level up from a Brighton, but you want to win some trophies. This is where I need to hear from Spurs fans. How do you feel? Um, at one League Cup and lots of top five finishes under Enoch and what, 2001, so nearly 25 years coming up fairly soon. So you tell me, I've gone thumbs in the middle. Do they need an FA Cup? Or, I mean, are they going to win the championship? You tell me. I mean, that would be a massive thumbs up. But does it need to be a more a more engaging trophy win than the um, EFL Cup in 2008 or 7 or 9 or whenever, whenever that was a long, long while ago? I'm down the middle on Spurs. Very conflicted on that one. Uh, West Ham United. I've given the thumbs up because... It was a bit of a train wreck, wasn't it? Um, was, were they from Iceland, the previous owners? And there was a relegation and lots of money um, lost and um, frittered. I think it was a banking crisis, to be fair, but it is what it is. And um, Gold and Sullivan et al. Uh, went in and they turned it around. One season in the championship, 12 in a row in the Premier League, six in the top 10, it says on my notes down there. And the Europa Conference League trophy, and the move to the new stadium. Yes, I know I ranked the stadium low, but in terms of commercials and for West Ham, it's a good thing whether I like going there or not is irrelevant. And um, I think I've got to give them the, the thumbs up on that basis. And what what is there next for West Ham? They're consistently into the top eight. And then there's that glass ceiling we've just been talking about with Villa. Can you break into the Champions League spots? Finally, I'm going to give Wolves a thumbs up. I do think with Wolves, and don't take this, don't cry about this Wolves fans, but I do think they just missed the era of stiff regulation in terms of spending at EFL level uh, because they blasted their way through like a 50 million quid loss or something to get out of the championship. Um, solid and stable in the Premier League. And, you know, they have complied. Um, there's been no FFP uh, breaches in the Premier League. And they've kind of, 
got ahead in front of that and not just flagrantly going, oh, don't worry, we'll take the points deduction. So um, say what you like about the super agent and the uh, Portuguese sort of model. It's, it's a model and everyone needs one to, uh, to compete. And Wolves were never a stable Premier League side for decades, were they? And now they are. So I'm going to give Faux Sun the thumbs up there. But I don't think they would be able to do what they did at EFL level with those first couple of seasons now. But hey, you are the um, you are the object of um, the time you're in, aren't you? And we'll give Faux Sun the thumbs up. And we will go... First of all, to our Hall of Fame, get yours in the comments. I want three ownerships you think have done really, really well. Now, I wanted to vary these because I could. It's very easy to go for all of the EFL ones that have brought the teams out. So it's a nod to Brentford and to Bournemouth and to Ipswich and to Forest, maybe ones that have come out of the... EFL and stabilised, particularly big nod to Brentford. But I didn't want to put Brentford and Brighton because it's kind of the same um, narrative there. So I'll put Brighton in um, in the middle there. I'll put Villa in because they're our poster boys for trying to break the glass ceiling of the top four. How will they do this season? I'll put Liverpool in because they won the title against um, Abu Dhabi, Man City, Pep, De Bruyne, etc. Et so I've tried to vary the Hall of Fame there. Uh, Villa trying to breach the glass ceiling in the um, Champions League positions. Brighton, in terms of being the poster boys for coming out of the EFL and stabilising. And Liverpool for the challenge right, right, right at the top of the um, the Premier League. And if you notice, there were only three thumbs down in this. So my Hall of Shame. Uh, Chelsea, hopefully they'll sort out the chaos of the first couple of years of the Bowley ownership and um, sail off. Uh, back into the big four, as they were for much of the early sort of noughties under Abramovich and Mourinho. Everton, chaos. Um, I think that one goes without saying. And points deductions and whatnot. Will they get a sale through and we can be judging new owners? And Man City. It's, um, it's, a, it's a conversation starter, isn't it? Putting them in the Hall of Shame and giving them the thumbs down. And you can give me your views. Just keep it nice and calm in the comments and I'll say that for um, for all of the teams really there was a bit of a sense on the championship comments yesterday of um, and I said this in yesterday's video <laughs> I tried to preempt it but still got the um, uh, triggered um, comments a bit of a sense of it's like somebody slagging off your family the owners of your football club you're allowed to do it but nobody else is and I think that probably um, chimes in with the 84% um, we're into stated uh, preferences and revealed preferences. A lot of people saying they're happy um, with their owners, 84% indeed. Um, and I don't necessarily see that reflected in the comments. So let's try and have nice and balanced, nice and cool, calm. Um, it sounded like it's going to be an Eminem rap, didn't it? But I won't um, continue with that because I'll get demonetized. Um, but yeah, get involved in the comments. Give me your three Hall of Fame, your three Hall of Shame, and let me know. Are you part of the 84% that says your club's owners are doing well? I said I would link it. Click over there for a 24 owner run in the championship. Again, it's a little bit different um, in terms of it being the second tier and the, the kind of clown show that the championship can be. So a few more thumbs down um, and a few less thumbs in the middle and thumbs up, let's just say. But go and get involved over there on yesterday's video as well, and get the debate going on who are the best and worst owners in the Premier League.